Hey, this is Jay Lee at FrogCube.com, and I wanted to show you something that I was working on here. Uh, this is a 20-gallon Aquion uh, aquarium, and I put about five inches of glass below, which is siliconed in place behind the frame. Uh, I'm going to use my standard uh, Frog Cube uh, conversion kit to convert this into a front opening terrarium like this. And for that, as you can see, I took bark and I uh, solidified it to the back using uh, foam that's generally landscape foam. It's used for waterfalls, ponds, etc., cetera, uh, to kind of uh, push into the rocks in between the crevices to fill it up. But instead, I used it for the background, so it's black, so you don't notice it as much. You focus more on the, uh, the bark uh, it is um, specifically cork bark, as it does much better in high humidity, and that's the whole purpose of my terrariums. Uh, but I wanted to do the bottom a little differently. Normally, I uh, take the bottom and I fill it full of, say, rocks or pebbles, or in most cases, I've been using grow stones. But I wanted to do a false bottom. Now, a lot of people out there, you see, do false bottoms with egg crate. They take egg crate and PCV pipe and they uh, fill it at the bottom. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to try something new. So I 3D printed my own mesh. There you go. Uh, it is about six millimeters wide. And then I added an extra six millimeter frame along with uh, some uh, extra in the middle to give it just a little more rigidity. That being said, uh, it does bend. And uh, then I decided to print these legs. And the legs, as you can see, have little spacers to let the water through, but they also have mesh bottoms so that if I wanted, I could silicone them into place. Don't think that's necessary. I decided I'm not planning on doing that. And I also have to wonder, do I need a whole bottom like this? Maybe I could just have done this in two pieces. Uh, a lot of people are concerned if you do it in two pieces, then, well, dirt is going to pour through. Uh, but I have a solution for that anyway, and I'm going to show you what I, my plan was. So I wanted to make this a whole simple process. Uh, so here I have it, popped the, uh, the legs in, the legs just uh, push right in, to, right in and fit. See, there you go. And I'm going to make one a little longer. I did not print this one quite right, but it's just going to slide right through in place like this. And uh, these add about 50 millimeters uh, to the bottom. Uh, so here we go. So basically this makes my false bottom. That's nice. Gives it uh, about, I'm going to say about two inches at the bottom. So two inches of space for the water to go. And the reason why I have the one hole that's a little taller like this is to suck water out of the bottom. When it gets too full, I can just use like an aquarium hose with a pump at the end to uh, suck the water out. I'm gonna put a little cap on it too. Get a little cap put on the top so nothing gets down there. But it does make it easy to get the water out of the bottom. Now, for the top here, um, I don't, my, my animals uh, normally are terrestrial. I'm gonna take this whole area and fill it full of plants. So why bother having anything at the bottom? In fact, uh, lighting coming down hits the bottom the worst. Uh, it's, it's just not gonna get as much light as anything uh, above in the top 20 inches. So rather than do anything, I'm gonna put a bunch of uh, live oak leaves at the bottom. Now it's actually called live oak, live oak. Um, they're not, well, they're living, sure, but it's live oak. That's the name of the tree, and it makes little small leaves. I'll show you that in a second. But, of course, what we're concerned about is things getting through uh, the mesh here. So what I've done instead is I've gotten this cocoa fiber mat. This is one that I think is about a quarter inch thick. You can do an eighth of an inch. I mean, the whole point is that the mat will let water through. It's great because uh, it does break down over time. Uh, except it does have uh, a little bit of rubber also, rubber sealant, natural rubber, take in mind. Um, but I can take this and just pop it right underneath. And actually, I made a little hole 
right here for the uh, for the drainage. And uh oh, I'm gonna have to put it on the wrong side. It's naturally curving this way. I really want to put it this way, but I already put the hole in. Ah, I'll just, even though I'm talking to you guys, I'm gonna take this out. And that was the nice thing about this. This is really easy to just take out and fix the way I want it to. So why not, right? Even though I'm talking to you about it. I'll just switch those. I've also been thinking maybe I need places here uh, to add some uh, plant nets. So I could just, if I wanted to plant, which I don't, but if I wanted to, I can put them in here. I'll just pop that at the bottom. And I'll take my cocoa fiber mat. And I'll just slide that in. And I'll push it uh, over the hole. Pretty good. I do have to print a better one of these maybe. The uh, hole is not perfect there. But otherwise, that creates a nice seal around the edge, making sure that nothing falls through. And uh, now what am I gonna do at the bottom, right? You're saying, okay, oh, live oak. I got a whole bunch of live oak leaves. And I'm just gonna take these oak leaves, put them on the bottom. No, uh, no dirt, no substrate, just oak leaves. And I think my frogs are actually gonna like that. They don't usually hang out at the bottom anyway, and uh, when they do, People always say they hang out in the leaf litter. Well, now they got a whole bunch of leaf litter. So now all I gotta do is start planting. Um, most of my planting is gonna occur on the back. Of course, I gotta put my terrarium together. So I will put the bottom vent. For those of you who have never seen these, these are the vents I make. See, they have mesh here to let air flow through and they have a hole right here with a cap on it to uh, put a uh, misting system in or a fan or something else at the top if I wanted to. Pop that in right at the top. And then here's my door. And these are hinges that I also build that you can push on top. I always take a little bit of silicone here and here at the bottom and I usually silicone the top and the bottom in but I'm not going to right now because I'm just showing you I'll just take that and pop it in I also screw this in tighter but I don't know where my hex wrench is I think I put my hex wrench somewhere around here but uh looks like it'll be okay right now so there we go There's a little more to it. I usually angle these things properly, tighten it up like I said, but uh, that's it. Now I got my whole terrarium going on. And again, I have a false bottom here, but if I want to, I'll just pop that cap off and suck the water out uh, using a, uh, like I said, an aquarium hose uh, that's used. It usually has a pump at the bottom for sucking the water out and then putting it into a bucket or something else. That's, I usually use a bucket. All right, that's it, guys. Uh, I just wanted to show you sort of my concept of how I wanted to do this. Probably also should cover the front here. But again, if I'm, if I'm using like a cocoa fiber mat, why, why do I need uh, one big piece? Why can't I do two separate pieces? Anyway, these are things I'm just thinking about as I'm sitting in here expecting to soon be quarantined in my house for the next eight weeks or whatever, who knows, right? All right, everyone, stay safe out there. This is Jay Lee at frogcube.com.